coal handling plant. Coal is the primary fuel for production of electricity in our country. The importance and the magnitude of a business of coal handling is emphasized by the fact that more than 60% of India's total installed generating capacity consists of coal-fired station. A 200 megawatt unit consumes around 2,500 tons of coal every day. A coal is transported from the collieries by the various methods like by rail, road, aerial ropeways or a conveyor belt. After transporting the coal from the coal mines to the power station, coal is required to be fed to the boilers or to be stored in the storage yard and this is accomplished with the help of the system of equipments called the coal handling plant. When the coal transportation system fails, it is essential that the coal should be made available to boiler continuously so that there may not be a stoppage of power. To meet the such situation, it is necessary that sufficient stock of coal is made at the power station so that there may not be interruption in coal supply to the boilers. It is expected to keep a minimum ground stock on the uh, ground stock of coal to cater to the requirement of station for the period of 45 days. Thus, the besides of unloading the coal received by the various modes of transportation, coal handling plant has to perform two main functions, stacking and reclaiming of coal to feed the boilers in the case of direct supply from the mines fail, to feed the boilers with the coal directly received from the mines. Classification of coal. Coal is the main fuel of a thermal power station and coal is classified as per their properties like peat, lignite, bituminous and anthracite. Now peat. peat. It is a first state or a first stage in progress of transformation of buried vegetation woods into the coal. It contains the high percentage of moisture and a small percentage of volatile matter and the carbon. Now lignite. It is the next stage of development of coal. It also contains high percentage of moisture that is 30% but can be dried just by exposing to air of 66% additional air. It can be used as a fuel in a pulverized form. The Naveli power station in Tamil Nadu is the first power plant in the country which uses lignite as a feed fuel. Bituminous coal. It is the most popular form of coal used for all purposes. It has low moisture content. Subbituminous coal is a similar to lignite and it contains 50% less moisture than the lignite. It also contains less ash than the lignite but it has no caking power. Now, semi-bituminous coal is intermediate between the anthracite and the bituminous coal and it has a low percentage of moisture, ash, sulfur and volatile matter and high percentage of available hydrogen. It contains 10 to 20 percent volatile matter and 2 to 4 percent oxygen. Anthracite. It is the last stage in the purpose process of transformation of buried vegetation into the coal and it contains highest percentage of carbon and low percentage of volatile matter that is below 8%. It burns only at high temperature. The polarization of anthracite is very difficult and costly. Now average amount of bituminous coal required generally varies from 0.5 mmt per megawatt hour per hour. Uh, 500 megawatt unit consumes about 280 tons of coal every hour. General description. The main line of a coal handling plant runs between the coal unloading point and the boiler house and for the maximum economy this line should be as short as possible. It is common practice to provide a screening and crushing plant should oversize the coal arise from the coal tree in the bunker and conveyor run and it is usually at this point after the crusher that the supply to the return from the coal store is introduced. Now, factors affecting the general layout of a coal handling plant. First is the mode of coal transportation. Second is the layout of a railway siding. Third is the position where the conveyor join the land. Fourth, the design of stocking out and reclaiming the plant. Fifth one, the layout and sequence of construction of main boiler plant. 
in designing a system conveyor belt inclination should not exceed 12 degrees to the horizontal and the height of approximately 3 meters should be allowed at a transfer points for inclusion of a chute second the bigger size plants the coal is mainly transported by rail it is supplemented by aerial ropeways or a road transport railway line is laid from the power station to the coal mines in the power station the railway siding layout depends on the space available and the volume of traffic to be handled the choice lies between the loop system or the run around system as figure the after unloading the coal it is screened by grills though the conveyor belts it goes to the coal crusher and then either to the boiler house bunkers or if it is not to be burned immediately then to the an open coal store for completion of this process following machines are commonly employed first is the rail track and line side equipment weighing machines wagon tipplers car pullers and battle chargers apron blade or vibrating feeders three feeders conveyor belts magnetic separators vibrating screens crushers storing and reclaiming equipment trip trippers control room etc now first thing railway track and line side equipment a railway track laid on the coal yard for receiving the loaded wagon for unloading the same into the track hoppers and taking out the empty wagons now the line side equipments are installed along each side of the track in the track hopper area to facilitate the unloading of the wagons at the power station employing the run around or the merry go round system now weighing machines the weigh weighing of coal wagon is established before the wagon is discharged into the adjacent ground hopper this is done by placing a couple or uncoupled wagons or weighing platform one by one in case of a road transport by trucks gross or tear weight of truck is measured with the help of wedge bridge located near the main gate of a power station and the other method of coal weighing machine is a belt weighting machines this is used at most of the station to ascertain how much of the incoming coal goes into the boiler house bunkers and how much goes to the open coal store and how much is reclaimed for the from the store now wagon tippers tipplers wagons received from the collieries are unloaded by one by one with the help of wagon tippler there are two main types of tipplers first is a side tippler in which the coal in the wagon is discharged into a hopper which is at the side of the railway track second is a rotary tipper in which the coal in the wagon is discharged into the hopper situated under the rail track side car puller or a beetle charger these are provided to receive a loaded rail wagons to marshal them and to place them on the wagon tipler platform and wagon so moved pushes the previous wagon which is now empty off the platform so that it runs down the main track gradient on to the out haul section of the truck that is uh, apron blade or vibration feeders uh, feeders are uh, mainly consist like uh, these feeders are used for removing the coal from the unloading hopper and to feed it to the conveyor belt usually two separate feeders are installed over each other each belt no conveyor belts a conveyor belt consists basically of an endless moving belt carrying a idler individual rollers with anti friction bearings and conveys coal from one transfer point to another magnetic separators the foreign material in the coal can causes a blockage of chutes hoppers bunkers and damage to the conveyor belts crushers and pf mills magnetic separators are installed at suitable points in the line of flow of coal to remove any magnetic foreign material 
from it. Now vibrating screens. Screens are provided before the crusher for sizing the coal. The screen coal that is 100 mm size falls on the conveyor belt and unscreened coal that is plus 100 mm size is fed to primary crusher primary crusher for crushing it about 100 mm size. Thus the screens help in bypassing the undersized coal which avoids the unnecessary overloading of the crusher. Now crusher. <coughs> These are installed for crushing the coal to proper size. Crushers must handle the sticky coal without clogging up and must be suitable type to take all the incoming coal from the conveyor which it is con certain that small coal will always be obtained crusher need not be installed storing and reclaiming equipment because of the irregular coal supply from the collieries which may be due to holiday strikes or breakdown in the coal transportation system or a coal storage is necessary also there must be an arrangement for reclaiming the coal which is stored at the stockyard now bulldozers tractor shovels drag scrappers stacker come reclaimer system can be used for stacking the coal in the stockyard and conveying it back to the feed system. Now triplers. Triplers are installed on the bunker conveyor belt for diverting the coal from the belts to bunkers. These can move backward or forward to feed the coal in individual bunkers. According to the plant capacity, trippers may be fully automatic type or manually operated. Now control room. For control the different equipments of coal handling plant from one place to maintaining the sequence of different belts with the safety of plant control room is essential. In a control room all conveyors, feeders, magnetic separators, vibrating screens, crushers are controlled with the illuminated diagrams where the position of the flap walls are also indicated. In this way the control room operator can know the complete operating condition of the plant and thereby the equipments of coal handling plant can be operated efficiently with the few persons. Now reception and unloading system for a coal. Now various modes of coal transport. Reception facilities are provided to suit the chosen mode of transport but provision for road borne deliveries is usually arranged because a rail or any other transport system is mostly supplemented by the road transport system. First, that is direct supplies. Some power stations are built so close to the collieries that it is possible to provide a direct feed system for the coal. The coal prepared at the colliery is taken by conveyor belt to the power station where it enters the coal handling system at a transfer tower. Since the rate at which the coal is accumulated varies according to the station requirements and the colliery output. The direct method of obtaining coal is generally supplemented by the rail and road, road transport for avoiding any emergency conditions. Now road supplies. In case of a road delivery, self tippling lorries where varies from varying from 10 to 15 tons capacity are used. Their container bodies operated by a hydraulic cylinder actuated by the vehicle engine are emptied either directly into the ground reclamation hopper with the belt conveyors running underneath or on the open coal store. So vehicles are wetted gross weight on the road's weight bridge as they enter the power station and again as they leave the tear weight. The difference is the net weight which is the weight of the coal delivered. Now rail supply. Railway siding. First thing. The power station situated far away from the coal mines, the coal transported is done by railways in the track of 60-70 box wagons or about 400 tons per rack. This however requires a wagon tippler of a heavy capacity at power station as the box wagons do not have side or bottom discharge facility. For a power station situated nearer to the coal mines, the coal transportation is managed by the station authorities with the self owned locomotive and wagons having the bottom or side openings. This requires an underground unloading hopper about 100 to 150 meter long and with the conveyor belt 
inside it below the hopper layout of the railway siding is decided on the basis of space available and quantum of mass to be handled for the power station rail system inside the coal yard loop system or the the run around system can be chosen the growth in the size of boiler and turbine units and the advance of super thermal power station having the unit size of 200 megawatt or more with a total plant capacity 2000 megawatt and above has led to the redesigning of fuel plant to handle the increased rate of fuel consumed delivered stacked and reclaimed a 2000 megawatt station can consume over 25000 ton of coal in a day when operating at a full load with each of 200 megawatt boiler burning about 105 tons of coal per hour to cope up such large demands run round system is found most suitable now loop system it is a system the train enters the unloading hopper house from one side and after unloading it leaves from the other side a rack of about 30 wagon is placed over the unloading hopper having a belt conveyor underneath the hopper wagons are unloaded by the opening the bottom or the side doors in case of box wagons each wagon is uncoupled from rest of the train and then unloaded by the wagon tipler into the bunker by side of track or beneath the track presently the loop system are employed in most of the power station and space available within the loop is utilized for stacking the coal now run around or the merry go round system in this system the locomotive and wagons remain coupled and move slowly round a large rail track section passing at one point over a discharge pit each wagon is emptied without stopping the train and remain coupled during the both filling and emptying operation this ensures a fast turn round at each end of the journey by eliminating the time lost in coupling uncoupling and tipling the wagons locomotive wagons wagons are of steel construction usually two types of wagons are used one is a box wagons that is kc bobx Bo, etc and the hopper wagons that is a bottom or side opening doors both types of wagons have two axles means two pahiye rehte hain unko and capacity of these wagons varies from 20 tons to 60 tons the larger the carrying capacity of the wagon the more economical they become more coal can be parked over a certain length of a railway track and a large capacity wagon can be discharged with the almost same effort as a smaller one to discharge the coal from the box type wagon each has to be uncoupled from the train and then discharged manually or by wagon tipler hopper type wagon are generally used in permanently coupled wagon trains by opening the bottom or the side doors the coal is discharged into the ground hopper and these wagons have a minimum valley angle of 45 degrees the valley angle is the inclination towards the horizontal of the intersection lines of two facts faces the larger the valley angle the better is the self discharging characteristics in permanently coupled wagon trains as in case of merry go round system the hopper wagons are used wagon tipler two types of wagon tiplers are used one is a side tipler and the other is a rotary tipler with with each of these type of tiplers the wagon is hauled on the platform and manual brakes are applied the wagon is clamped and the side tipler platform is then lifted sideways until the coal falls out of the upside down wagon into the bunker and the side of the track where the rotary uh, tiplers are used the wagon is fixed between the two large rings which forms a cage like structure and the cage is rotated and coal falls out into the bunker beneath the truck track it is possible to empty a wagon by side tipler in 50 to 40 seconds 
this includes the weighing rising to rest in the highest position and the side tipplers needs little excavation as the receiving bunker is above the rail track and where as in case of a rotary tipler receiving a bunker top as under rail level and the rings have to be made large enough for shunting the locomotive to pass through the main constituents of wagon tipler are as follows a tipler structure which supports the wagon during the tipping and the ho hoisting machinery which transmits the motion from driving motor to the tipler structure including the balance weight and wire ropes the third one the overhead structure which supports the hoisting machinery fourth the weighing machinery which initially weights and records the weight of the loaded wagon and after tipling the weight and records the weight of the empty wagon after that the operation of wagon tipler the wagon received from the collieries are placed one by one on the cradle of the wagon tipler in the central position then a wagon is weighed by weighing machine and is raised by energizing the hoisting motor the cradle with the wagon gradually starts inclining towards the hopper and wagon comes in a contact with the side bluster cushion cushion the hoisting being continued the wagon cradle arms and the side supporting grind riders from one unit and revolve about the tur turnier until the top of the wagon meets the top of the bluster pads and further together with the top sus sustaining structure revolves until the material is fully discharged the tipler is brought back to its original position by reversing the hoisting gear the operation can be done on auto or manual as the situation warrants the empty wagon is again weighted and new wagon can again be placed for repairing the unloading repeating the unloading operation in case of operation on its manual mode press push button lower and rotation of the hoisting gear will be reversed and empty wagon is brought back in the original position if the operation is on auto the reversing action will automatic after the predetermined time when the weighing is in progress the red light on the recorder is on when the light is off empty wagon can be replaced a mechanical suspension of the wagon tipler installed at ntpc badarpur tps are given below capacity 80 tons gross weight bogi type wagon type weighing type with recording and printed tickets operating cycle wagon weight of the full wagon for 25 seconds after that tip the wagon for 65 seconds pause for 15 to 20 seconds lower the wagon 65 seconds weight the empty wagon for 25 seconds changing the wagons 60 seconds angle of tip is 135 degrees giving a 45 angle at a side of wagon car puller and battle charger car puller a car, car puller is used to place a loaded coal wagon on the cradle of the wagon tipler before tipping and pushing it out from the tipler cradle after tipping to facilitate new loaded wagon to be placed on the tipler this is used with old wagon tiplers it consists of extra heavy cast iron cable drum with rope to which the power is transmitted from the motor through a set of reduction gear trains a solenoid brake is automatically operated and the motor is disenergized to permit the accurate car stopping by arising of the inertia of the motor reducer and the gearing of drums now various operations of a car puller should be done in the following sequence place the rack of wagon within the range of car puller run the car puller to connect the last wagon of the rack run the car puller forward till the first wagon is placed centrally on the tipler cradle up uncouple the wagon and reverse the car puller operation to take out the balance wagon 
run the car puller forward to the push out the empty wagon from the cradle. Reverse the car puller to place next loaded wagon on the tipler cradle.